Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch. In this video, I want to explore the use of enums to drive the construction of tab views in a Swift UI app. Using an enum opens up a number of possibilities for us to streamline and manage our code more efficiently. And in a follow up video, I'm going to be using the same enum to construct several instances of a custom tab bar. I love getting your feedback, so tap the thumbs up button if you enjoyed the video and leave me a comment below. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and ring that bell to get notifications whenever I release a new video. And if you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee. A link is in the description. There is a starter project for this video and you can download it from the link in the description. There are three different branches in the repository and the one that you want is the starter branch. This contains the completed source code for the first video where we build out our initial enum driven tab view system. The enum tab view completed branch is there as well, and that'll contain the completed source code for the video. Now, though this video stands on its own, we will be using this third branch as a follow up video on custom tab views, and that's what the third branch is all about. So make sure you download the zip file from the starter project branch so that you can work along with me. The starter branch has five simple views that we want to present in a tab view, and each one is pretty much the same with an image on it. The shopping cart branch though has an extra button on it that passes an int total property to a purchase view as a binding in a modal sheet so that we can update the total. Now, those of you who follow my channel will know that I'm a real fan of using enums that conform to the view protocol. And this allows me to add additional properties to an enum case based on a view. And as you will see, we can utilize this for our tab bar. And in the follow up video where we're going to use it for our custom tab views. Also, you can make your enums identifiable and case iterable, thus reducing your code in your views. So let me show you what I mean. First, let me organize our code and create our folder called enum tabs. After the folder's been created, create a new file there called tab item. Now this is going to represent two pieces of information that are required for our tab items, and that's a name and something to represent an image. And I'm going to use a system image. So let's create a new struct called tab item and create those two properties. First, name as a string, and then system image as a string. Next, create another file and call it tab view enum. Once created, create a new enum with that name. And then create a case for each of the different views that we want to present as different tabs, namely home, wine list, shopping cart, info, and directions. Well, we're gonna loop through these cases, so we'll need to make this enum identifiable and create an ID property. Now, since the cases are unique and there are no associated values, we can simply return self as the ID property and it is of the type tab view enum, so we can simply use capital S self as the type. Now, in order to loop through the cases, we have to specify that it is case iterable. And now here's the part that I really like. We can also say that the enum also conforms to the view protocol. Now, of course, view is not part of foundation, but rather Swift UI, so we'll need to change that import. Now that still doesn't solve our problem though, because what we'll need to do is to conform to the view protocol by providing a body property that is some view. Well, we've got lots of views and they're specific to each one of our cases. So what we can do is switch on self and let Xcode generate those cases for us. And then we can return the view corresponding to that case. So home for home, line list for line list, and so on. What we're doing is we're matching our cases to the views that we want to present. And what this means then is that simply by providing an enum case, 
we're really providing a view. So for example, the tab view enum dot shopping cart case will display the body property for that case, which is the shopping cart view. Well, if we're going to be creating a tab view with tabs, we'll need tab items for the tab bar. And that's why we created that tab item struct. So what we can do is create a computed property for each case that is a tab item type and have it return an instance of an appropriate tab item for each case. So we'll create a computed property called tab item that is of type tab item. And then on the body, again, we'll switch on self and let Xcode generate the cases for us. And then for each case, we'll need an instance of a tab item. So we could say tab item with the property name and system image, or we can just be lazy like I am and just type dot init, which works because it knows it has to be initialized as a tab item. So for home view, we could use the string welcome and the system image is a SF symbol and we'll use house. Now note that these system images are going to be used for tab bar icons. So don't use a fill variant. The Apple human interface guidelines say that tab bars should be filled variants of SF symbols with sidebars on the iPad should use the outline variants. So what Xcode does is automatically apply the filled variant for the tab bar so we can leave it out. And we can duplicate this for the four remaining cases and then change the two strings accordingly. For wine list, we'll use wine list for the name and the SF symbol will be the wine glass system image. For shopping cart, we'll use cart for the capital C and lowercase cart for the system image. On the info page, let's use about us for the name and info for the system image. And then for directions, the name is directions and the system image is map. Let's use this enum then to create our tab views. So I'm going to use the content view for that. So I want to rename this as start tab. And then I'm going to move it to the tab views folder. Now I also like my views to be organized as I see them presented like I have done here by adding a number to the views file name. So I'm just going to put a zero in front of this one to make it rise to the top. So now I can replace the body content with a tab view. Well, inside this tab view, we'll need to create our tab items. And this has become easier in iOS 18 as it's now a single initializer for the tab view itself and for the tab item. You can see that there's one for title key, system image, and content. So I'm going to choose that one because we have an enum case where the title key can be our enums tab item name property and the system image can be the enum cases tab item system image property. And the content needs to be a view and because our enum conforms to the view property, the body view for that case will be the case itself. Well, because our enum is identifiable and case iterable, we can use a for each loop to iterate through each of the all cases to get us a single tab, which remember is a view. So let me move this tab inside the loop then. And then just to make it easier to read, I'm going to create a variable called tab item. That will be that enum tabs tab item. So then for the tab itself, the title key will be the tab item name. The system image is the tab items system image property. And the content is a trailing closure. So we can remove the label and just use a pair of parentheses. And then this requires a view, which is the enum case itself as it conforms to the view protocol and the body case will just be used. And there you have it. Well, there's one more property that we can add to a tab view, and that's the current selection. And this has to be something that will identify which tab is currently active. And since this is going to change, it needs to be able to be updated and bound as a state property. 
So I'm going to start by creating a state property called selected tab. And we have to decide what type we want for this object. Well, typically one might use something like an int to denote the tab, but we're using a for each loop and we'd also have to generate an index for each one of those ones. So instead, I'm simply going to use a tab view enum type itself. And the default one is the home case. So now we can add a selection argument to the tab view constructor and bind that to the selected tab. And then each tab needs to know what value to tag that selection to. And now in iOS 18, we can use an additional argument called value. And for us, that value is the current tab case. Now, if we want to be able to provide programmable navigation between tabs, we can assign a different value to the selected tab for views had access to that selected tab. And the way we've constructed our enum, though, is there are no associated values, so we can't pass it in as an argument. This is not a problem, however. We can create a class that has an observable property that we can inject into the environment at this start tab and use in any one of the views that we want. So let's create a class called router that uses the new observable macro. And we're just going to provide a single property called selected tab, which is a tab view enum type. And the initial value is the home case. And then we can return to our start tab view and replace this state variable for selected tab with an instance of the router class. Our selection then is now bound to the router's selected tab. Then we can inject this router into the environment to the entire tab view so that this is also now going to be accessible to every tab and its dependents, but we don't need to use it in every single one of the tabs. For example, the purchase view is now a descendant of the shopping cart view as it's presented as a modal sheet. So we can create an environment variable for the router class here using router.self to create an instance of that variable from the environment. Now the preview crashes, so we'll need to inject an instance of the router class into the preview environment as well. So to demonstrate my point now here, after the H stack that creates your increment and decrement buttons, I'm going to create a new button with a label go home. And then for the action, I'm simply going to update the router's selected tab to the home case. Because since this is a modal sheet on the shopping cart view, the current case is shopping cart and the environment has access to that router. And I'm also going to style this button as bordered. So let's see what this does. If I go to the start tab view now and go to the cart tab, and from there I can present the purchase view to add a new purchase. So let me add a couple. Now instead of dismissing right away, let me just tap the go home button. And nothing appears to happen, of course, except that when I dismiss now, I am magically at the home tab instead of that shopping cart tab. This isn't the greatest user experience. So let me return to the purchase view. And after I set the router's selected tab to home, I'm also going to call the dismiss function to dismiss the modal. So let me repeat that process once more. From the start tab view, I'm going to go to the cart tab view. And then I'll present the modal sheet and add some purchases. Now, when I tap the go home button, the view dismisses and I see I'm on the home tab. Well, this app is designed for both iPhone or iPad. So let's test it out on the iPad. As you see, it works as expected here. 
So that completes this short video, and I hope you might consider using this technique in some of your projects going forward if it makes sense to you. I'm going to continue on with this project in the next video, and the link will be in the description once it's available, where I'm going to replace this tab bar on the iPhone and the iPad to a couple of different custom tab bars. And many people don't like this new tab bar on the iPad. So the good news is you don't have to live with it if you don't want to. You have choices, but there are some catches. So join me in the follow-up to this video to learn more. If you found this tutorial helpful, please give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment. You can subscribe to my channel to get notifications of new videos. And remember that you can also download my YouTube channel listing app for free and quick access to all of my 350 plus YouTube videos. A link's in the description. And also remember I have a full Swift, Swift UI course available on my Teachable site where you learn how to build a fun, multi-targeted app.